What's up everybody, Nick O'Dwyer back for the 10th inning with another episode of This Day in Sports History. In yesterday's episode, we saw Walter Johnson, one of the greatest pitchers in MLB history, throw his only career no-hitter. We do have some more no-hitters to get into today, but we also have a plethora of Wimbledon championships to get into. Over these next couple days, there will be many, many, many Wimbledons to get into, so I don't really want to spend a lot of time talking about it. So, I'll stop, and we will get into it. If you're new to the channel, though, you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Let's do it. This Day in Sports History. Today's action starts out in 1902 at the Wimbledon Finals. On the women's side, Muriel Robb wins her only major title after a 7-5, 6-1 defeat in straight sets over Charlotte Cooper. Five years later, we have a bit of an oddity in these upcoming videos because we don't have Wimbledon, but we have the U.S. National Championship in 1907. On the women's side, Evelyn Sears defeated Carrie Neely 6-3, 6-2 to win her only career major. Two years later in 1909, we are right back to Wimbledon. On the women's final, Dora Boothby earns her only Wimbledon championship and her only major title in her career after a 6-4, 4-6, 8-6 victory over Agnes Morton. 12 years later in 1921, this time on the men's side at Wimbledon, Bill Tilden defeated Brian Norton 4-6, 2-6, 6-1, 6-0, 7-5 in 5 sets. This would be the third of 10 Grand Slam single titles in Tilden's career and his second straight Wimbledon. Also in 1921, in boxing, we have the first million dollar gate at $1.7 million dollars when Jack Dempsey went up against Georgie's Carpentier. Dempsey would end up knocking out Carpentier in the fourth round to retain the title in his third defense. We go right back to Wimbledon though in 1926. On the men's side, Jean Berotra wins his second Wimbledon singles title 8-6, 6-1, 6-3 in straight sets over Howard Kinsey. This would be the second of four major titles on the singles side for Berotra. One year later in 1927, we have both the men's final and the women's final in Wimbledon. We'll start off with the women's final. Helen Wills Moody defeated Lily Alvarez 6-2, 6-4 in straight sets. This would be the first of eight Wimbledon titles for Moody and the fifth of 19 majors on the single side. On the men's side, we have Henry Cochet winning the first of two Wimbledon titles, defeating Jean Berotra 4-6, 4-6, 6-3, 6-4, 7-5, making that comeback and winning his second of seven overall majors on the single side. Five years later in 1932, on the men's side, Ellsworth Vines defeated Bunny Austin 6-4, 6-2, 6-0 in straight sets to win his only Wimbledon singles title and the second of three major single titles. Also in 1932, we have some golf at the Western Open on the men's side. Walter Hagen would win his fifth and final Western Open 16 years after he won his first, with a score of one under to defeat runner-up Olin Dutra by one stroke. Back to Wimbledon in 1937, Dom Budge defeated Gottfried von Krom 6-3, 6-4, 6-2 to win the first of back-to-back -back titles and the first of six overall majors. One year later in 1938, on the women's side, Helen Wills Moody defeated Helen Jacobs 6-4, 6-0 in the fourth final between the pair, which Moody would win all four. This would be the eighth and final Wimbledon title for Moody and her 19th and final major of her career. We get a little bit of a break from tennis now, move to 1941, and Joe DiMaggio, who we knew tied Wee Willie Keeler's streak yesterday, would end up breaking his record of 44 game hidden streak after he hit a three run home run off of Dick Newsome in the bottom of the fifth inning to get 45 straight games with a base hit. Now we move up to 1948 and we go to the British Open where Henry Cotton, who shot an even par over the four rounds, would end up winning five strokes ahead of runner-up Fred Daly to win his third Open victory and his final major of his career. But now we go right back to Wimbledon in 1948 as well. Bob Falkenberg defeated John Bromwich 7-5, 0-6, 6-2, 3-6, 7-5 to win his only Grand Slam singles title. One year later, we stay at Wimbledon. On the women's side, Louise Bruff defeated Margaret Osborne DuPont 
10-8, 1-6, 10-8 to win the second of three straight Wimbledon titles and her third of six majors. Now we move to Major League Baseball in 1950 and Cleveland Indians pitcher Bob Feller would win his 200th game in a 5-3 victory. Feller on the day, 8 and one thirds innings pitch, 9 hits, 3 runs, 2 walks, 4 strikeouts, en route to his 200th victory. Move up 4 years to 1954, we go to cricket. Dennis Thompson scored a career best 278 runs in England's victory over Pakistan on the day. Back to Wimbledon in 1954, Yaroslav Drobny defeated Ken Roswell 13-11, 4-6, 6-2, to win his only Wimbledon title and his third and final major. One year later, we stay with Wimbledon in 1955 on the women's side. Louise Bruff defeated Beverly Flights 7-5, 8-6 in straight sets to win her 4th Wimbledon singles title and 6th and final major. Also in 1955, at the U.S. Open Women's Golf, Faye Crocker, with a score of 11 over, defeated runners-up Louise Suggs and Mary Lena Falk by 4 strokes to get her only major championship. Back to Wimbledon now, in 1960, Maria Bueno defeated Sandra Reynolds 8-6, 6-0 to win her 3rd of 7 majors. Five years later, we stay with Wimbledon on the men's side. Roy Emerson would get his second consecutive title, defeating Fred Stoll 6-2, 6-4, 6-4. This would be the ninth of 12 majors for Emerson. One year later in 1966, on the women's side, Billie Jean King would defeat Maria Bueno 6-3, 3-6, 6-1 to win the first of 12 Grand Slam singles titles and six Wimbledon titles in her career. One year later at the 1967 U.S. Open on the women's side, Catherine Lacoste, with a score of 10 over, wins two strokes ahead of runners-up Susie Maxwell and Beth Stone. This would be the only major in Lacoste's career and she would become the first amateur to win the U.S. Open. Move up to 1971 at the Wimbledon Women's Final, Yvonne Gouladon defeated Margaret Court 6-4, 6-1 to win the first of two Wimbledon single titles and the second of seven majors. One year later, we have the U.S. Open on the women's side and a record to talk about. Let's start with the U.S. Open. Susie Maxwell Burning, with a score of 11 over, wins one stroke ahead of runners-up Judy Rankin, Kathy Ahern, and Pam Barnett to win her third of four majors. Then for the world record, pole vaulter Bob Seedrum would break the world record for the fourth and final time, jumping 5.63 meters, which he would hold for just shy of three years. Right back to Wimbledon in 1976, on the women's side, Chris Everett defeats Yvonne Gouladon 6-3, 4-6, 8-6 to win her second of three Wimbledon titles and the fifth of 18 Grand Slam single titles. One year later, we move to the men's side. Bjorn Borg defeated Jimmy Connors 3-6, 6-2, 6-1, 5-7, 6-4 to win the second of five straight Wimbledon single titles and the fourth of 11 overall Grand Slam single titles. We stay with Wimbledon at 1983 on the women's side. Martina Navratilova beat Andrea Yeager 6-0, 6-3 to win the fourth of nine Wimbledon single titles and the sixth of 18 majors. Five years later, we remain on the women's side. Steffi Groff would end up defeating Martina Navratilova 5-7, 6-2, 6-1 for her third leg of the Grand Slam and her fourth of 22 overall majors. One year later in 1989, we have both the U.S. Senior Open to talk about and the Canadian Open Women's Golf Tournament. First at the Senior Open, Orville Moody with a score of 9 under wins two strokes ahead of runner-up Frank Beard. Then at the Canadian Open, Tammy Green with a score of 9 under wins her only LPGA major title, one stroke ahead of runners-up Pat Bradley and Betsy King. Now we go back to Wimbledon in 1994. Conchita Martinez upset Martina Navratilova 6-4, 3-6, 6-3 to win her only Grand Slam singles title. One year later in 1995 at the U.S. Senior Open, Tom Weisskopf with a score of 13 under wins four strokes ahead of Jack Nicholas for his only Champions Tour major. Now we get into the 21st century. We start off in 2000. We have both the UEFA European Championship Final and the U.S. Senior Open to talk about. Let's start with the U.S. Senior Open. Hale Irwin, with a score of 17 under, wins three strokes ahead of runner-up Bruce Fleischer to win his second U.S. Senior title. Then at the UEFA European Championship Final, 
France was going up against Italy. They were looking for their second title. France would end up getting it, defeating Italy 2-1. For Italy, Marco Del Vicio started off the scoring in the 55th minute, giving them a 1-0 lead. Then in the injury time in the 90th minute, France tied it up after a Sylvian Whitlord goal in the 90 plus third minute, sending the game to extra time. Then in extra time, David Trezouillet scored in the 105th minute to give France the 2-1 lead, something they would hold on to, get their second title. Five years later, at the Wimbledon Women's Final, Venus Williams defeated Lindsay Davenport 4-6, 7-6, 9-7 in three sets to win her third of five Wimbledon single titles and the fourth of seven majors. Now we move up to 2008 in the NBA. A settlement was reached allowing the former NBA franchise Seattle Supersonics to move to what we now know as the Oklahoma City Thunder. Three years later in 2011 at Wimbledon on the women's side, Petra Kvitova wins her first Grand Slam single titles, defeating Maria Sharapova 6-3, 6-4. This would be the first of two majors in her career thus far. Two years later in 2013, we have a no-hitter alert when the Reds were going up against the San Francisco Giants. Reds pitcher Homer Bailey no-hit the Giants in a 3-0 victory for Cincinnati. This would be Bailey's second no-hitter within 10 months of each other. Bailey on the day, 9 innings pitched, 1 walk allowed, nine strikeouts. The batter that he would end up walking would be the first batter of the seventh inning. Tough for Bailey. Still, second no-hitter of the last 10 months. Amazing. We end today off with three separate events in 2017. First, we start out in boxing when Jeff Horn would go on to upset Manny Pacquiao to capture the WBO welterweight title in a very controversial decision. This match was decided on points and they did end up giving it to Horn in what is a very controversial decision. Many people, excluding the judges for the match, thought that Pacquiao did enough to retain the title, especially when you look at it from the stance that, in those situations, when they have to go to points, the title holder usually gets a little bit favored. Pacquiao didn't in this fight though, therefore Horn would get the welterweight title. Now we move to the Women's PGA Championship, where Danielle Kang, with a score of 13 under, would get her first professional win one stroke ahead of runner-up Brooke Henderson. Finally, at the U.S. Senior Open men's golf, Kenny Perry, with a score of 16 under, would win two strokes ahead of runner-up Kirk Triplett to win his second U.S. Senior title. So there you have it. That's what happened on this day in sports history. Again, I do apologize if this was a bit of a longer video. I tried to push through it. There's a lot of Wimbledons to go through, though, for the next couple days. So I will apologize in advance. But hopefully y'all stuck with this video. If not, I will see you all tomorrow for Nicholas Wire and the 10th inning. Be good. See ya.